everyone. Remember this lovely Ford Focus that I said I was going to scrap, but then at the very end of the last video, I did say I'm going to park it outside for a little while and not scrap it straight away. I don't know whether it was fate, whether you believe in that, but somehow I just couldn't bring myself to press the button on the computer to get red corn out here to take the bloody thing away. So we decided to keep it for a little bit longer and I got contacted by this guy who was a member of the Ford Focus Owners Club and he come down here and he said to me, he looked around this car and he said to me, this is a gear but it's a special gear, the trim in this car is not an ordinary gear trim, it was a special edition and where I noticed that the passenger front seat tilted down even though it's a five door hatchback, I, couldn't, I didn't understand that, he said that's because it folds down so you can put your laptop on it and the seats had special like rotating headrests, they had little pockets and neck curtains all over the place. There was little extras on this trim and he said this trim is so rare he's only ever found one other car with this type of trim in it which is in Spain. So he said to me can I have this trim? I will find you a set of gear seats and I will swap all the seats over if I can have that trim. And I said yeah help yourself but it will cost you a bottle of Beck's beer. So he agreed. So he come down, swapped all the seats, he put a nice set of seats in it and he also replaced the clocks. Now I thought that the, the instrument pack on these focuses were coded, but he said to me on the Mark 1 focuses they're not coded. So he fitted a new set of clocks and guess what? The Speedo, Red Beater, they all work now. There's no lights on the dash, no engine lights, no nothing. I've actually drove the car and it, the, the instrument pack is perfect. So I was well happy. The car looks, at, I'll, show you, I'll show you in a minute. The interior trim now, even with this new set of seats he's fitting, looks great. So I said to the boss, you know what? He's fixed the instrument pack. The trim's all been changed, but it's a good trim he's put in there. He's got what he wanted. He got that rare interior trim he wanted because he's a, he's a like Ford Focus owners and it's like, they know what they're looking at when they look into this kind of stuff. So we thought to ourselves, maybe we can fix this car up a little bit. I mean, it can't be that bloody hard, can it? We've got the back suspension arm, the trailing arm bush, which has come out of the bloody arm altogether. So I thought, I'm gonna have a go at that, you know. I thought, I'm gonna have a little pop of that to see if the bolts do come out. I'll show you what happened as well. And the steering rack, I thought maybe where the pinion goes in, there's a plug at the back you can undo and you can get in there and change the seals. I looked for seals and I couldn't find nothing. I rung forward to see if I can give me any seals or anything to go in the rack. Nope. But I found a rack from Millfield Auto Parts in Peterborough, £135 plus fat for a complete power steering rack. So I thought, you know what, I'll put a new rack on it. I'll change the bush at the back. I'll change the ball joint at the front. Put some wiper blades on it. Give it a clean up. It'll be a good car. So we're going to keep it now. We've decided to put it back together, get it all up and running properly, and then we'll sell it probably when the MOT runs out. Or we could just run it around to the MOT runs out and then get rid of it. I'll think about that one later. Anyway, let me show you this trim to start with. So here is the gear interior trim that was given to us to replace the original trim. And these seats are a kind of like a, a darkish grey material. They are proper gear seats and they are a nice velour as well. But they kind of match the door panels if you know what I mean. So nothing actually looks out of place. If you didn't know you would think that these were the standard seats that came with this car. I can't show you just yet the instrument pack working because the bloody battery is dead flat. I did say in the first video that the battery was suspect and the battery is completely dud now. So I'm gonna to have to put another battery on it. But as far as the interior trim goes, very, very nice indeed. So inside the car, it's nice. It's very cushy. No complaints whatsoever. I haven't really had time to go through all the comments on the first video with this car but a number of people said just scrap it and other people said no you need to save it well we decided to save it anyway for a little while at least 
and I wanted to actually get this bush replaced. This is the rear trailing arm bush. You see it's slid along this shaft here and it's completely come out of the arm. Now, here's the thing. The bolts that actually hold this complete arm onto the car is normally a problem because the bolts kind of get seized in the metal collars of the bushes of the arms that go onto this swinging arm and they don't come out. But I thought, let me have a go at it just to see. And here's what I found. I should have showed this actually, but I didn't. I just went for it without actually recording it. But you've got this lower suspension arm. This is where the spring sits. And as you can see, there's absolutely no bush in it at the minute. The reason there's no bush in it is because I had to cut it off with an angle grinder because the bolt that goes through here and through that hole there to hold this onto that main arm, as you can see, the bolt is seized solid in this metal collar. So that collar would have gone in there, in the bush. And there was no way I was gonna get the bolt out. It just wasn't coming out. I tried with heat and everything, that just destroyed the bush. So it was, it was futile. The same goes for this inner one here. I had to cut this off both ends as well, like so. This particular one here, you've got a special like camber adjuster. So I've ordered new bolts and washers and everything from Ford themselves. So I can set all this back arm up properly as it's supposed to be. But this particular arm is only just over 40 pound from Millfield Autos in Peterborough, plus VAT of course. So there's no point messing around with this arm, I just ordered a new arm. And also, this little arm as well, I've completely destroyed the bush here. This was the same scenario, the bolt was seized in the metal collar, so I had to cut it off. But it come out the other side. So I was kind of lucky on the inside where that arm goes on the inner part here, it actually, the bolt actually undone, no problem. It come out straight out, I couldn't believe it. But obviously the outer part, nah, -ah, not a chance. But apart from that, apart from two bolts, which were a bit of a headache and I just had to put an angle grinder. And by the way, at the beginning of this video, you see I was wearing goggles and this complete face mask, even though that probably isn't good enough, because this angle grinder, while I was cutting it, I had one, one disc explode on me. It didn't catch me or nothing, but it could have done. That could have been bloody nasty when all this bit could come flying off. Because these are quite thin discs, these are cutting discs. And if you can, you can snag them sometimes on something and it will shatter the disc and they'll go flying everywhere. So I was kind of rather careful. I put sort of like lots of layers on and gloves and everything and all that. <coughs> but I guess one of them discs there, that could probably shatter, go straight through that as well at speed. So it was a little bit, I was a little bit careful actually doing that. Uh, anyway, getting back to this, the brake pipe came undone luckily. This top arm, the bolt comes straight out, no problem. And the two bolts that go through, where's my bush? This bush here into the chassis, they were like brand new nearly, look at them apart from the head of the bolt, the actual threaded part, they whizzed out no problem at all. And the rest of it will come out nice and simple. So I'm quite happy. It, it, I mean, some people have said it's a lot easier just to drop the entire frame down with both of these arms attached to it. But I didn't want to drop the whole lot off. And the reason I didn't want to drop the whole lot off is because I don't have a special puller push that bush in and you can't exactly tap it you need to put the press that bush in so I've got a little press here which I know would do the job but I didn't I wouldn't be able to use that press if I had the whole frame off the car so I wanted to go for it that down this route where I just take this arm off and then I can I can fit that arm into the press and press the new bush in which I'm still waiting for at the minute but as soon as that gets here I'll have a go at putting it in ta -ra! All the parts have arrived, finally. 
Surprisingly, I'm happy with this. This arm here and this one have cost £65. That's not bad. This trailing arm bush, which is actually from Ford, this was like £25. And I ordered the nuts and bolts that I needed all from Ford as well. These are just bolts. Apart from this special one, this does your camber on your rear wheels, which actually goes in this inner hole here. And you've got to have this washer set at a certain degree. I'll have to do the rear wheel tracking on this, but I can put it basically where it was to start with, so I'm somewhere near. And also there's another special washer there, which goes to this side of the bush and a nut. So I've got all the bits I need now. So first things first, let's fit this bush. I do love it when they put stickers all over the new bushes. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this on the wire wheel and just clean it up a little bit. I knocked the old bush casing out with an air chisel. And then I used a file to get rid of any rough edges and then emery cloth just to clean it up inside. The new bush, you'll notice, it's got like a bit of a collar on it one side. So it only fits in one way. You need to take note of which way that comes out. But anyway, you'll see you've got this bar here and there's a little notch just here. So if you kind of line that bar up with that notch, that's around about where you want to have it. So I'm going to get that pushed in very slightly. And I have a great big 50 mil socket which I can put there, which I'm going to use to push this bush in using the press. Well, I've got the arm kind of suspended on a step ladder in level with the press and a couple of sockets that actually, a 50 mil socket actually fits the outer diameter of this bush casing. So now I'm going to pump the pump and uh, hope our bush presses in. So here goes and let's see what happens. It's got two choices. And I'll tell you what, boy Joe, that seems to be going in okay. I'm quite impressed. That's as far as it goes. I should release the pressure. Yep, there goes the socket. Wow, look at that. Perfect. There we go. That was rather easy. Well, here's the plan of action. I have cleaned up this bolt and put copper grease on it, and I shall put some freeing oil on this captive nut as well. I shall raise this arm up and connect it to this top suspension arm so I've got the whole arm assembly hanging. Then I can just lift this part up and bolt our trailing arm bush straight up to the chassis without too much hassle. There we go. That's our arm now suspended on that top arm. Which, gives, which makes it a lot easier. So now I can just bolt our two bolts up and bolt that trailing arm bush up to the chassis nice and easy. Well, we're slowly getting there. I've reconnected the brake pipe. I'm gonna hope that the bleed nipple on the wheel cylinder actually undoes. Otherwise I'll have to replace that. Uh, I'm going to connect up the handbrake cable here. There's a little joiner. Notice in the brake shoes, there's plenty of shoes left, which is really good. I'm going to clean these up with emery cloth and chamfer them. And also I'm going to adjust these shoes up. But I've shoved the bar in here to pull the handbrake lever forward. That slackens the cable, so it gives me enough slack so I can actually fit this back into here. It can be a little bit tricky fitting the cable back into this clip. It all depends how much the cable has been adjusted up by the handbrake. In this case, it's, well, put it this way, when I pull this lever out of here, that lever should be right up against its stop in there. 
but it's not it's not actually touching its stop that says to me that the actual handbrake lever here or the cable has been over adjusted so before I put all this back together I shall loosen off the handbrake cable adjust the shoes up properly so the drum just fits on nicely then I shall adjust the handbrake cable up later when all these shoes are adjusted up right now I'm going to fit this suspension arm now but you'll notice up here you can see where the old bolt used to be because this bolt has got the like washer on it that's sort of like egg shaped so it'll only it can turn this this was what will do your like camber on your rear suspension so if i put this arm up i can fit this bolt in and hopefully i can measure it up to where the actual marks were on the old washer so i'm pretty much about right so that bolt and washer is where it originally was sitting now if I come round the other side, I've got this special washer as well, and there's a cutout in this bolt thread, so I can that washer will only fit on in one position, like there. And that's also gonna sit where the marks used to be. Uh, if I can get it off again. So you, you can see where the actual shadow used to be of the old washer. As long as that's sitting in the same place, we know our rear tracking is going to be about right. Now I'll put a brand new nut on. I shan't tighten that at the minute because I'm going to put the spring in. And once the spring's in place, then I will jack this up, compress the spring and put the other bolt in onto the actual main suspension arm. Get on, get in there. There's the anti-roll bar was a bit of a problem. It's not going to unbolt from the actual subframe, but I've unbolted the actual drop links either side of the, of the anti-roll bar. So I could twist the anti-roll bar around enough to make the bottom arm swing down enough, although it's still pretty tight in the debushes. But anyway, our spring is back in. So now, If I can figure the trolley jack out, I should be able to jack this up. And now I'll be able to fit our bolt back through here. I have been putting copper grease on all these bolts, so hopefully it won't seize up again. And just in case you needed to know, this little suspension arm here, this little swinging arm, in order to fit that in, you need to jack the suspension up. So I put a trolley jack on the bottom of the suspension arm there on the knuckle and jacked it up quite a way to actually get the actual hole to line up. So that will actually knock in now with a hammer and a little bit of jiggling around. Well, that's the hard part over. I haven't tightened any of the nuts and bolts up yet. So that's my next step, tighten everything up and then bleed the brake and hopefully I will not have to replace the wheel cylinder but we'll see. Adjust the rear handbrake cable, well de-adjust the handbrake cable, adjust the shoes then readjust the handbrake cable. Put the brake drum on, put the wheel on, have a final check over and I think that will do for the back end. Well luckily I've managed to bleed the brakes okay but you see that handbrake lever just there that's supposed to be butted right up against that little plastic stop there and there's quite a gap there so that says to me the handbrake cable has been over adjusted so i'm going to slacken off the handbrake cable and see if this lever goes back to where it should be all you do is just pull up the handbrake lever gator and there'll be a little 10 mil nut down there so it's pretty straightforward mine had a little clip on it you had to take off so probably never been adjusted before but I'm, oh, the way it's over adjusted you'd think it had been unless someone's taken it off and put it back on but anyway I should loosen this cable off give it a few tugs and let it off and now let's see where our handbrake lever is sitting yeah that's exactly what I wanted to see our handbrake lever is now pretty much butted up against our little rubber stop 
that shows that the handbrake cable was not seized at all, it was just over adjusted. And now our lever's back in the off position, now we can adjust our actual brake shoe adjuster which is here. I normally put a scribe here to mark it and I can adjust these out click by click normally by putting a screwdriver in between the shoe and the wheel cylinder and pushing the shoe forward and that will make this click out. If it doesn't you can kind of hook them out like that. Look, I just dropped the light. But yeah, once I get these back brakes adjusted then I should put the drum back on and then I should adjust the handbrake cable up by the handbrake lever until the drum just starts to bind a little bit then slacken it off a touch and that'll be it, done. But before I do all that adjustment, I've got some emery cloth and I'm going to clean up these shoes and put a little chamfer here, it just makes the drum go on easier. Now I use my emery cloth again, I should clean up inside the drum surface just to make sure it's all nice and clean of rust and stuff. Well, I think that's about it. All bolted back together, looking good. And more importantly, we've now got a trailing arm bush that's actually secure in its arm. So I've gone over everything, checked all the nuts and bolts. Everything's back in place as it should be. So that's that. Yeah, I can tell you now, that battery's gone right downhill. It's like dead, dead, really dead. So I'll have to get a new battery for it, but I'll sort that out later. I'm just gonna bark it up. Now we've got the new instrument cluster fitted. Splendid, and the Speedo does work. So yeah, quite happy about that. Well, that's it. That is the rear suspension finished. You know what they say? in for a penny, in for a pound. Well, there's no backing out now. We spent too much money on it, so we're gonna keep it, get it done up, then we'll decide what we're gonna do with it. I'm actually kinda of glad we didn't give it to the scrap man. It is too good to go, really. I quite like this car. It's growing on me. So now, I've basically got, and oh, by the way, the guy from the Ford Focus Owners Club who come down and swapped the trim, he was one of the main reasons why we kept this car, because if he hadn't phoned me and contacted me about that trim, I would have probably given it to the scrap man by now. So, uh, thank you. <laughs> but now I've got to get the steering rack, which I've ordered, which I thought was quite cheap, 135 plus that. I've got the steering rack to put on it, bottom ball joint on the driver's side, I believe, wiper blades, and probably give it a good bloody valet, and that'll do. Anyway, this is my little project, so that's it for today, and I'll probably let you know when I do something else on it. So, thanks for watching. See you all in the next one. Adios.